Hello, I'm Maria Hall Brown. Welcome to Protest and Promise. Well, today's program feels like a match made in heaven because our wonderful panel of young Angelinos have the opportunity to meet the director of the Youth Development Department, a new department here in the city of Los Angeles, which is dedicated to young Angelinos. First, let's introduce the panel. Um, over we have Camry. Say hello. Hello, Devin. Nice to see you. Hello. And we can tell that you are at school because your uh, dorm mate is going to secretly be in all the shots, correct? <laughs> okay. Hi, Bridget. Nice to see you. Hi, Evan. Hi. Hi. And Alexis. Good to see all of you. Hi. And our wonderful guest today is, of course, Lisa Salazar. She is the director of the Youth Development Department. And in that role, you have uh, a lot to do. So let's start with you, kind of give an overview of what you do and what the department is. Great, thank you. Well, it's great to meet all of you uh, virtually. I'm Lisa Salazar, uh, Executive Director of the new Youth Development Department. The department was established in July uh, of 2021, just this past July. We're about seven months old now. Um, the city of Los Angeles was one of the only big cities in the country that didn't have a department that was solely focused on young people. So through a lot of grassroots advocacy and, and leadership uh, of our local electeds, they created this department. So our job is, is really to be the central kind of place of information for young people and their parents to access programs and services here in the city of Los Angeles. Because you may have had this experience where if you're looking for a book club program or a, you know, a recreation program or even for a summer job, you have to go to different departments to find that information. Now you'll be able to just come to the Youth Development Department and we'll be able to filter you back out to the right place to access those services. So um, I'm really excited about this job, but you know, probably the most important part is that a big piece of it, or the most important part, is really youth voice. So it's really listening to young people such as yourself to tell us, the city, bureaucrats, what's working, what's not working, what do we need to do more of, what do we need to do less of, how can we do better? How can we do better to help young people be successful, you know, graduating from high school, both college and career ready. So that's my new job. Um, I'm really excited to meet you all and, and to have this conversation. So speaking of the youth of Los Angeles and, and our wonderful panel, they've been with us, you know, for a couple years going wow. through a whole bunch of subjects and topics. You know, we originally began talking after the unrest in the summer of 2020. But, you know, the city is an important and integral part of their lives in a lot of ways. So, you know, have any of you accessed services from the city of Los Angeles or tried to or even thought about it? Evan, have you thought about what the city of Los Angeles as a governmental agency might offer you as a young Angelino? I have. Right now I'm actually in the process of um, applying to work at the polls, and I think that's at least city adjacent going through the city website to learn about how youth can um, work at the voting centers. Yep. So I think that's really just something that's um, there's so many great opportunities for us to get involved. Cool. That's great. Bridget, what, what have you ever accessed anything within the city? Um, no, I, I haven't um, accessed anything in the city. And I feel like it's only because um, I've always just had um, opportunities from my last internship in 2019. So um, all, all of my awesome opportunities kind of came through them. So it was an internship that really kind of helped. Well, that's that's actually a really good yeah. route to take. But, you know, within the city department, I'm sure that there might be some opportunities for that, knowing about what internships are available. Yep. Devin, what about you? And your roommate's gone so we can talk openly and honestly. To my recollection, I can't say that I have, but 
you know, started getting more into uh, the voting process and looking at certain options that the city can provide um, as like transportation and anything like that. But no, not not quite to the extent of that. Well, Cam Marie, I know that you are, you know, highly engaged and interested in things. If you had, a, if you wanted to have the city be a resource for you, what are some of the things that would be helpful in your world? I mean, the most, the thing that's, that that I remember that stands out the most to me are the summer night lights or SNL. Those were this was like a thing that uh, Mayor Garcetti had implemented a few years back when I was in high school, like in 2011 or something like mm -hmm. that. Um, and it was to uh, like prevent like gang, um, you know, pre prevent like gang uh, like conjunctions and stuff where they all like meet up and stuff. But I thought that was okay, but it kind of stopped or yeah, but Interesting. it would happen at night um, during the summertime. Cause that's when a lot of murders happen, I guess. And um, they would have like free food and games and stuff for the community. I would say programs or outlets for young people to channel channel their energy and their um, leisure time into. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Alexis, have you ever accessed anything via the city? Um, yes, I actually volunteered at the polls when I was in high school. But speaking on like what everybody spoke about, I feel like it would be definitely more effective if like those types of resources were accessible at school. I didn't learn about the program or the organization to volunteer to poll through my high school. Um, I did volunteer while I was in high school, but I found from like someone emailed me like from an indirect um, communication. So I wish that there were more opportunities like presented at school where I could be involved within my community. Um, but I also feel like it's very important to create spaces for people to share their own individual stories. Um, so then like people get a deeper understanding of what the community needs, like hold spaces for um, conversations like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How will you be working with the education department? Is that part of the plan? We work very closely with the school district, with Alley Unified, on a lot of different levels. But, you know, it's interesting listening to uh, the young people here that, you know, I hear this over and over when I talk to young people across the city is a lot of times young people just aren't aware of the services and programs that are available through the city of Los Angeles. We don't do a good job of, of promoting what's available. So, you know, finding out at school is, is one great way, and we have a really good relationship with the school district. But pushing out information to 500, you know, thousand students in the classroom, especially now when, you know, we're in this kind of Zoom environment is not, is not easy. So I'd, I'd love to learn from you all about what is the best way to get information out to young people today in this kind of like, you know, COVID, not COVID environment. Okay, where do you get your info and how would you be, you know, what's the best route? Bridget? Um, well, my first thought is definitely, uh, you know, social media, um, especially like uh, media like similar to TikTok. I feel like a lot of us are just Mind, mindlessly scrolling on there and um you know i just feel like um it's you know the thing where you have to go where everyone is mm -hmm. and so everyone's on social media and you know i i don't know there's <laughs> there's always a lack of like um people that actually know how to use social media especially when it's um older people like uh, you know, millennials trying to reach out to Gen Z's, <laughs> like this whole barrier um, that uh, not many people know how to like cross. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, let's take that whole social media thing, and I'm going to throw this at Devin, so be very thoughtful here, Devin. Um, yes, it's great to have the information on social media. It's wonderful, you know, even if I was joking with her, with Laura earlier about a TikTok, you know, being on TikTok. But what will you pay attention to? How will something that the city is providing, even if it has you know, very applicable you know, assets that you are able to, you know, what is it that will make you watch or look or follow or all of those things that you have to do? Social media is a really great tool, but you gotta pick the tool up. 
Well, um, but it's really tough because a lot of people in the younger generation that are on social media will see any advance by uh, officials or anything like that as corny, as tacky, as like not genuine. It's just, I think it's the culture that's been created around social media use by older generations. And it's always just gonna come off as strange, really. Um, so I, I don't know it off the top of my head what the best approach is could for in the older generation to kind of really engage with younger generation on social media. But I think uh, trying to implement some sort of reform into the education system where it's less uh, casual and more you're there to, you know, for most people, you're there to learn. I think that, that could also be a really effective way in getting people into the mindset of thinking about something other than what they're going to eat in the next hour. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, 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 I think that, that could be pretty effective. Okay, so Evan, I know that you know one of the things that you wanted to do is you know you want to work at the polls, which means that you obviously have an interest in politics, which means that government is part of politics, which means that the messaging probably would be applicable to you. So what is it that you would want to know or hear or see or access that would be relevant? Something that I'd love to see is just everything that they're doing in the city, all of the city council measures and all of the work that's being done really broken down and explained to us because I know that when I'm going to, you know, look at the propositions or when mm. um, I'm hearing that there is some movement going on or when I see that there's even, you know, work being done in the city um, and I see the effects, I don't know what went into that. So I think it would be great to have a place to go um, on social media or online geared towards younger people talking about the things that are important to them and how they're happening in the city. That's a great idea. I love that. I love that idea. Because uh, you're right, you know, around voting time, there are so many, you know, measures and propositions on, on the ballot. It's hard for everyone to really understand what does this really mean? And, and you know, if you're 18 and over and you're registered to vote and you're a voter, you want to you want to value that vote and you want to make the best possible decision based on your understanding of what's in front of you. So I really love that idea for our youth council as, as one example to do some sort of voting guide. Um, for young people in language that, you know, is that makes sense, uh, that, that young people can resonate with. That's really great. And on the social media, um, tell me if I'm, if I'm on the right track. So my sense is that we have maybe two or three seconds to really capture someone's attention. And whatever that graphic or message is uh, has to be generated or kind of checked by young people not me not not my you know not 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 anybody that's like 20 years younger or older than me because i'm pretty old but you know y young people that actually generate that um what, what am i on the right track alexis what do you think um i definitely think that you're on the right track it's definitely based on grabbing people's attention and it's so crazy too because like TikToks have extended to like three minutes because they have requested for videos to be a little bit longer but like the the nature and science of grabbing people's attention usually lasts like three minutes so it's very important to grab people in and make sure that you know um the message is effectively communicated across within those few seconds what about you camry what do you pay attention to the story to substance to purpose if it doesn't have like any like purpose or like I said like longevity, then I'm like, uh, I don't really care about it. I'm not gonna invest my time into it. So not yeah, only does um, it have I to- I think that the city should have more than enough like data, data to like pull from and use that to like create content that's gonna um, reach the audience that they need to reach, you know, from complaints to requests that, you know, citizens have made of the city, that's valuable information. You know, yeah. like maybe you can make, you know, appeal visually, especially cause that's what that's what we process quicker than words is visuals. Um, 
incorporate that information into like graphics and stuff, mm -hmm. videos, stories. Mm -hmm. Well, along with all the wonderful services, I mean, I gave them sort of the, the elevator speech of the Youth Council, but I think that that is a really spectacular part of this program. And maybe you'd be gracious enough to, to share a little bit about what your hopes are for yeah. this council. Yeah, great. So the Youth Development Department will have a youth council that will work with us directly to help us assess services across the city and the various departments that provide services to, to young people and to their families, like library, rec and parks, the community and family department, the, um, Department of Cultural Affairs, just to name a few. There's actually 26 departments in the city that provide or have funding to provide services to young people. So our Youth Council will help us with that. They'll also help us to uh, develop a strategic plan or a vision for services in the city for young people. They're going to be doing that with us this year. They're going to be uh, developing policy recommendations. So after they kind of do this assessment of the departments, tell us like the city should be spending more money on this and less money on that and and should invest in this other thing and you know even just along the lines of, of communication you, you know the city should be communicating this way if they really are serious about getting the message out and connecting with young people so we're recruiting right now for uh, youth council members two from each of the 15 council districts um, who will sit on that youth council it's a 12-month commitment um, we're asking our members to meet with us at least twice a month. We're compensating them for their time because we want to, you know, honor and respect um, their expertise. Um, and so we're, um, we're advertising that right now on Instagram. Um, you can follow us at, at LA City Youth. Um, check out our Instagram page. I'd love to get your feedback on that. But yeah, that's just a little bit about the Youth Council. We're taking applications until February 28th, so we just have like a couple more weeks to recruit. Have any of you ever thought about a career in government? You know, I think, I think government gets a bad rap because I've been in the government for 20 years now, and I know it's a long time. You might think like, oh, she's an old crusty bureaucrat, but I'm not. I love my job. If you're passionate about serving your community and being in a place and in a position where you can actually affect change, having a job with the city or the county or any government agency is really an exciting career. And I know it sounds crazy because people just have like this kind of mindset about government jobs. But I'm here to tell you that if that's what you're about, about making change in your community, working for uh, a government agency like the city of Los Angeles is really something worth exploring. And I can't think of a job that you can't do with the city of Los Angeles. We have forest rangers, we have scuba divers, we have IT professionals, we have, I mean, you, I mean, look, this studio, this is like film and, you know, this is film and television. These are city employees. So, before you think, no, I don't want to work for the city, do a little exploration with us. You bring up a good question, because all of you are very civically minded, or else you wouldn't even be talking right now. The people that you've had the opportunity to meet, the issues that you have addressed over the last couple of years, the reason you even were part of this program to begin with, demonstrates that you are passionate young individuals who are trying to evoke change. Have you ever, did you, do you feel like city government doesn't do it for you or that you have to do it in an outside realm? Alexis, you are nodding, so I'm gonna let you. Yes, I feel like while, while she was talking, I was kind of listening to like my sociology degree background about just understanding like systems of oppression and understanding where inequities and inequalities are created with our, within our society. And I feel like there's just like this major like mistrust that a lot of youth have with their government. If it means like understanding like gun violence or like just being able to combat like the day-to-day -day racism, that a lot of minorities face. So I feel like, you know, it needs to start with like building trust and building a relationship and having, I keep on going back to conversation because I feel like communication is really important because a lot of stories have been like 
not, not they're not visible anymore or they were never visible because of how systems of oppression operate so i just think it's really important to build that trust first mm -hmm. before we start talking about like initiating policies and all of that stuff mm -hmm. interesting okay. all right yeah what about you camry how do you feel about I the ability think that's of big, like honestly what alexa said like that's really how you should just handle any human you know and you want to they should you want they want to like familiarize yourself with the environment with their with the community with their practices how they go about you know handling you know situations in their own lives um yeah alexis yeah i love that trust first yeah. so devin what about you do you think that government is the location to affect change or do you think that Things have to change within the government in order to affect change. Well, you stole the answer right out of my mouth. Oh, uh, it's, I, I think it's definitely the latter. Um, you, I think affecting change or affecting trust between civilization and the government is very important. But I think that trust, for me, only happens when action is taken to ensure that the government is actually for people because as it stands federal government is for the pockets of billionaires and corporations that buy politicians it's they own so much of what is being done and they control so much of what is going on that there is no level of trust that you could amass by talking to me and the when the government becomes free uh, from that level of control and is able to actually implement policy and is able to actually enforce what this country says it's about only then can you start proving to me that you have an intent to be trustworthy that's not necessarily talking about the city level that's more so talking about the broader scope of how our government functions um, because on the city level, it's I wouldn't say it's nearly as, as bad, but in the Senate, in the House of Representatives, it's, it's out the wazoo, everybody's own. So when that changes, when the fundamental um, problem with government is fixed, in my, uh, that's only when you can start really making change, because that's when you can make actual policies. That's when all your policies are not regulated by who's getting what money out of it. Although this got big picture, I yeah. think it See? really demonstrates the need for you know the youth development department and the youth council because there seem to be some mountains to climb here, and the imperative in the future is to sort of change the way you know things are perceived. Well, I'm I'm hoping we can be the you know the the starting point where we actually have young people working directly with us, advising us sharing their perspectives so that it can affect change and build trust with not only the young people but the communities that they represent so hopefully we're this will be a good start so what would you what would you hope to hear say we did this again in like six months what would you hope to hear from you know our wonderful panel that they have i i would i, I would hope to hear that that since the Youth Development Department was created, they're more aware of programs and services available by the city, that their peers and family members are more aware of how to access services. That, that to me would be a win in our first year. And I guess the last thing would be that, um, that they participated in the strategic planning process and now they un even you know, everybody has a clear understanding of what the goals are uh, in terms of utilizing city resources um, to assist young people be successful in whatever path of life that, you know, it is that they choose to, to go on. So that's what I would hope for. All right, I'm going to ask a very short question and, you know, try to go around and I'm going to start with uh, Evan first. What would change your mind about the efficacy, the impact, and the advocacy that government could provide to a young Angelino. I've used all my big words. That's the end of them. 
I think really hearing from the youth that are involved in the youth council and the impacts that they're able to make on their peers, hearing from a really diverse range of youth, knowing that um, we're all able to be positively impacted by this program, you know, including systems involved youth, youth in foster care and homeless, because we have just so many in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Bridget, what would you want to hear that would make you feel optimistic and positive about your government and the ability for your government to affect change? Um, I think for me personally, it's um, not leaving out, you know, the little guy or low income neighborhoods, uh, especially, you know, since um, I'm from South Central, I live in South Central. Uh, I, I kind of just see how the how the city's initiative just like doesn't really travel that far here like uh you know like homelessness and mental health um services like it's just it's hard to find uh and especially um since you know los angeles is so diverse there's so many people from so many backgrounds and you know i i myself and um mexican and you know, we don't believe in mental health. So <laughs> I I just think that there's just different ways that different kinds of people can help. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Camarie? Um, same as Evan and Bridget. Um, I live in South Central. I'm from South Central. Like, the homelessness issue really has to, like, get resolved. Like, it's really ridiculous. I see it every day when I drive to work. Like, it's it's really it's really pathetic, and it's a disgrace, you know? Having your voice heard in that arena. In arena. Uh, all right, Alexis. Um, I think like what everybody else was saying, just making information applicable and accessible um, within the sense like everybody has access to it, but it's also like can be related and like changed based on like cultural context. Um, because like, like people were saying, um, or I think Bridget said it, um, uh, Los Angeles is so diverse and so beautiful and that's what makes Los Angeles such a beautiful place is because we're a collection of different people so I think making information uh, applicable to everybody else's experiences would make a great difference yeah. all right Devin you get to wrap it up on this one um I would just echo everything that everybody has said, especially the homeless issue. I think that's probably one of the worst like stains on LA is the lack of uh, attention given to that. Well, that's a big mountain as well. All right, well, Lisa, what would you want to offer our wonderful panel as a you know an uplifting mo you know note of hope? Because you know you're working the good fight, you're fighting the good fight. They're obviously you know, wanting things to be better. What would you what would you offer them in your final words? Just keep doing what you're doing. Stay connected. Use your voice. Your voice is power. Um, share your perspective, you know, as often uh, as you can. And um, I hope one, one day when we have our youth council uh, up and running, uh, we'll be able to connect somehow and share those experiences and perspectives. And that's a wrap on protest and promise.